Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video and it's over this Trick Flow Super 23 230cc CNC ported head. Now obviously it's not brand new, it's been ran, but I cleaned it up and it's in pretty good shape so it shouldn't have, should, what it flows here should be as close to, pretty close to what it should be due right out of the box. Like it should be the same, to be quite honest with you. Same valves, everything else. So you get to see the flow numbers on this. And I'm also gonna compare it to other ones because hopefully I put these videos out in order because the video that should have came out before this one would be a Brodix Track 1 233 CNC ported head versus an AFR 235 CNC ported head. This would be in the same volume range as those heads. This one's supposed to be 230 cc's and it's full CNC ported as well. And we get to compare them. Um, I'm actually super pumped up about this because I do follow some forums and someone had asked about these heads. And even though they've been out for many years, they have never come across my flow bench. So I have been very curious to see what they do because they make an outstanding, which I think is actually outlandish and mostly unbelievable claim that these things flow 270 CFM at four tenths of an inch valve lift. Yeah, no, they don't. I, I haven't flowed them yet, but I'll be shocked if they do. I will happily eat my words because they'd be the first... 23 degree ahead that's not a raised runner one um, or huge that's flowed that amount of air, especially being that a standard valve spacing and a two weight intake valve. But we'll talk about all the specs and all that in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, first off, this is a standard valve spacing head, which means it's not moved over. So even though this volume could be compared to like the Brodix and the AFR uh, heads, the valve spacing is not. Both Brodix and AFR have moved their valve spacing. So in other words, they moved their intake valve and exhaust valves over to get away from the wall and to make room for a bigger intake valve. The trick flow did not. This is standard valve spacing. So this is normal work with most, uh, almost every piston that's out there, it's that. It also has the smallest valve of the others. So both Brodix and the AFR had a 2125 valve. This is a measly 208 intake valve. I know you're thinking, well, is that the biggest valve you can get in a standard valve spacing head? No, you can put a 210 in here. You can put a 210 and still keep a 1600. You can go bigger than that, so you could in fact do a 2125, but you'd have to shrink the exhaust valve down. So anyway, there's that. These have um, pretty good ch chamber size. I'm not sure, I should have looked up before I started this video what size they are. I believe they're 68 cc's, which would make them um, the same size as Brodix, but smaller than AFRs. As far as the CNC work, I actually do like it. So maybe this, if they do hit 270, this might be why. They have a good transition. So this is the scene angle right here. This is your, called your top cut. If you look how it goes into the chamber, that's perfect. This is a very, very good um, job of taking the top cup and sweeping it out into the chamber. That's beautiful. Now it does have this ledge on the exhaust side. Um, that's going to hurt flow a little bit, but not as bad as you would think because the air is going to kind of jump it this way. Um, it's got a radius exhaust valve job over here. It has a five angle valve job on the intake. You can see a better job on probably this port if the camera will focus. Yep. And anyway, beautiful work there on the CNC as far as the chamber wise. This transition would be terrific, which will really should help its low lift flow. So maybe it will, but I, I doubt it, but maybe. Okay. Um, the one thing is that usually TrickFlow is really good with their CNC programs as far as getting the transitions correct, but not on this one. Let me show you. You can see in this port, you see that line there and you see the other line there? That's where the two tool paths have met. So in other words, there's a it starts out porting this way and it's porting this way, and then it shifts over in the machine and starts porting from, say, this side and starts cutting. But it looks like the tool paths aren't exactly perfect and you get those two lines there. And now, don't forget these lines also correspond to the lines on the short side, which is where the air is most sensitive. So that's not a good deal. Let me just take my finger and feel it. Yep, there's definitely a ridge there. It doesn't look as bad as that one, because after all, the port's turning. So there's not as bad of a ridge, but there's definitely a ridge. That's going to hurt some of the flow a little bit, too. The exhaust looks really good. Um, I know you're like, I can't see nothing. It's dark. The exhaust looks really well. Not bad. You got a little bit of carbon staining, but not bad. But anyway, um, 
Let me change around to different views, show you that, and then I can show you what it measures on the inside as far as dimensions. And you can compare those, and then we'll get to the thing you're probably looking for, which is phone numbers. Here's the intake view, which is a nice view. It's a really good job there, too. And you can barely see that line, which I don't know that the camera's gonna focus, but there's a line right there where that transition is. But you look at this, it looks really nice. I mean, I'm quite impressed. Got a nice corner radius. Um, looks like a great port shape, it really does. So good job there. You can tell the dividers are a little thin. This is probably as thin as I would ever go on these. Um, the one head that I haven't seen that's in the same CC range as this would be the Profiler 235 CC head. It's CNC ported. That one, and I'm not talking about the one from a different company, I'm talking about the one actually from Profiler. That one right through here, because it kind of curves up, it's super, super thin. Um, you gotta remember when you start thinning this out, it's really hard for that gasket to hold in and tries to blow out. Telepro does make something called the 1206S-3 and it's got a steel core and it prevents them from shifting. The catch is it's wide. And if you had to trim it to fit this, you'll be in for a treat because of that steel core. That's a little thin. The only thing with that is, let me kind of tell you is, Yes, the reason why we make this thinner is so you can get more cross-section through here, which is great, but don't forget, you still have to make the intake match this, otherwise you've wasted your kind of your time. And that's kind of tricky. And like I said, you can still have to get the um, manifold to be on there and seal up. So personally, and I understand for doing it, and I do thin mine out, but I don't know, this is really usually thinner than I even I would go. This to me is one of those things where you're doing it just to make it look good on a flow winch because on an engine, um, most people cannot, do not have the ability to port that thin. Um, regular people that are buying this head, they'd have to have bought a ported intake with someone like me or someone else. And even that, there's still a chance that intake gas is going to suck through because what I haven't mentioned and I probably should more often is... Um, not all intakes will port this properly. So you'll have some times where they're shifted over and it won't line up. And the other thing is this, and this is the one of the big things. You can get a brand new intake manifold and it will be the flange. If you just take a straight edge, you put across it, it could be warped like six thousands. Now that gasket will take that up. Absolutely, it's got enough crush will take some of that up. But when it's already thin like this and you got the six thousand there, it's gonna push it. And you're like, no, that would never happen to a brand new one. Trust me, I've milled enough intake flanges to tell you it absolutely happens. Um, so if you mill them, you'll see it's kind of weird. They're not always true, I'm trying to say. But anyway, back to the head. Still think if you can get it right and you get the intake match and everything, you're going to be golden. Um, looks fine. Let's take a look at the measurements though, and I'll show you the exhaust port. Let me show you the exhaust port actually first, then I'll show you the measurements. Here's the exhaust ports. They're a D-shaped design. Now, even though they're D-shaped like Brodix's, the Brodix ones I think are actually raised up probably 100,000, maybe 200,000 more than this. The other thing is, is these, they're, even though they're D-shaped, they're smaller than the Brodix one, which is also D-shaped. So if you're looking at area when comparing those to the AFR and the Brodix, the exit area on this is actually smaller, which in some cases it may help for some of you guys that are running like smaller tube headers. Although why in the world would you buy this head and use really small tube headers is beyond me. Anyway, one more thing I do want to show you is the valves that come with it. So obviously I've cleaned them up. These are Ferreira valves. So Trick Flow comes with Ferreira valves and that's good because that's a good quality valve. Now this is the intake valve and this is one thing that may actually help the flow. Let me set it down here, I guess. Get my light where I can halfway see. There we go. It has a very large back cut. So maybe you can see this right here is the seat and this is the back cut. Usually the wider this is, it helps low lift flow. So this may help the low lift flow, but I'm going to say it right now before we flow it. I'm betting it only does in the 250s at 400. Maybe it might crack 260. It ain't having a 270. But 250s would be good. 256, by the way, is what the AFR did at 4. Or 255. 254, sorry. Here's one thing. This is the exhaust valve. Now, the AFR used a tulip, which really helped its exhaust flow. The 
TrickFlow uses a nail head and so does uh, Brodix. However, this was kind of odd. I'm gonna show you this. Hopefully the light can get it right. I'm setting it down this way because I want you to see it. The guide was actually hard to, I mean, the valve was actually hard to push out. And you could see wear marks on the valve as if it was too tight in the guide. So, which is kind of a weird thing. There's actually a pretty good scuff mark right there. You see it? It's like on the verge of seizing. Hopefully you can see that right there. Definitely there, there, there. So either one, the valve, it kind of looks like it might've been the valve. Could have been the guide in the same way, but hmm, I'm thinking the valve, because it'd be very hard to machine a guide to have this wear part into it. But it looks like the valve itself wasn't machined perfectly true. Like when they were cutting this, that there was some play or something, and it caused these high spots in the valve itself, causing it to kind of stick in the guide. Definitely not ideal. So there is a solution. One, you could either change the valves or you can hone the guide to a bigger size. Now, what's weird is none of the other ones did. It was just this one, which is kind of odd. So anyway, uh, there's that about the valves. Let's get to the measurements. So here we have how I measure them. The throat, which you can watch other videos to see where I'm measuring. It measured 1.88, which is 90.3%. The bowl was 99%, which is about, by the way, I mean by percent is, 2.08 is an intake valve size. 100% would be 2.08. So 90.3% of 2.08 is the throat. The bowl was 99%. Then I have cross sections over the short side. So this would be the window or the apex of the short side. It comes up with 2.95 CSA, which is pretty good. Usually you can use this and you can, multi you can take away that uh, decimal and that's about what it flows. So you would say, well, that flows 295, but th it fluctuates. The, bit, the better port design will actually flow more than what that CSA kind of tells. The worst ones will flow less than what that is, but that's a fairly good indication about what it's gonna flow. So in my mind, it's gonna flow about 300 CFM. It, it may go higher, like I said, that's a good port shape, so it might actually, in fact, go higher. The push rod pinch, which is your minimum cross section for a small block Chevy head, comes in at 2.44, which isn't bad for a standard valve spacing. And these are just my measurements, just kind of keep track of things. You might ask, well, how's it stand up to the AFR and Brodix? Well, here you go. We have throat, we'll go 90, they're at 91, and 91. Not to mention, look at that, their throat is 1.95, 1.95, and 1.88 because of the smaller valve. Bowl, um, 99%, uh, AFR was 100%, and 95%. That was actually pretty small. Look at that, 202, 2.133. 207. So actually, the Brodix had the smallest bowl of those. Cross section of the short side, you look at the 2.95 for the trick flow, which is smaller than the 3.21 from the AFR, which is relatively big, and then 2.89 from the Brodix. By the way, this one flowed in the three teens. So even though it says 289 or 2.89, you think uh, 289 CFM had a pretty good port shape and move spacing. So yeah, it did go quite a bit higher than that. So this one probably will too. All right, minimum cross section, 2.44, 2.66, 2.33. So it does have more cross section than the Brodix as far as minimum, not as much as the AFR. Anyway, let's go ahead and pop it up on the bench. I'm gonna float on a 4155 board because that's what you're probably gonna put it on or should put it on. Not to say it wouldn't work on a smaller board because it's with the 208 intake valve, you don't have to worry about it being shrouded, although the chambers are probably gonna overhang. Anyway, I'm gonna flow it. I don't flow it with an exhaust pipe, and I'm gonna share the results with you. By the way, I do wanna point this out because this guy did, the, did it right. All right, these do not come standard. These are ISKI guide plates. And ISKI puts this notch like this. It's like a little key. So you got like a, a U groove here, and a, think of it like the female and the male in. And what you can do is you can slide these back and forth to line up where you want your rockers to line up with the tip of the valve and your push rod not to hit over there. And then what he did, and this is the right way, and it saves you in case you ever have to do it, he then tigged them so they stay locked in place. So if he ever has to remove this, he can put it back. And you can slide them both and they'll be exactly where it should be. Smart move there. Anyway, these do not come standard. All right, let's get to flowing. I thought I'd show you how I'm actually flowing this head. This is a Brzezinski now. It says a 1207 entry, which it is, but I use modeling clay to kind of close it up. I do have a 1206 entry uh, Brzezinski one as well, but in all fairness, these are actually slightly bigger because they made 
the wall smaller here. So this gives it the best opportunity. Also, when I flowed the AFR 235 and the Rodex Track 1 233, I use the same entry to keep them all in the level playing field. You have the 4155 bore in there. There is a uh, gasket in between here, as you can see. And I use the same spark plug. So I'm gonna, this is actually a 400 valve lift. So I've already flowed it, but this is a claim 270, but I want you to see this. I've already flowed it once, so I backed it back up to here. It's good. Um, it's not 270, but it's good. So let me go ahead and kick this on and show you. That's not bad. That's not bad at four. That's a really good number. All right, if you look at the flow numbers, the one numbers I care most about are four, six, and one. The 400 number, strong, 261 CFM almost. That puts it in the top tier for a 23 degree head, which is even better when it's a low port 23 degree head with a two-way valve, 1130 second stem, and standard valve spacing, pretty amazing. The 600 number though, it's 310. That's for the size of this head, that's just okay. And the peak number, it only goes 310 too. So most of you are like, what do I care if it, what it flows a one inch valve lift? I've only got a 700 lift cam. It gives you an indication of how it's gonna keep flowing. It tells how stable the port is too. This, it's just okay. So if you look at the 400 number, outstanding. 500 outstanding. After that, it's just meh, you know. The, that, now, it doesn't mean it's going to be a dog for a head. The 400 number really is going to help it out quite a bit. So, But anyway, there's that. The exhaust side, remember this is flowed without an exhaust pipe. It does 195 CFM at 4, which is pretty good. Really good, actually. 600 to 223 and peaks at 233. So pretty good there, especially since considering this isn't a super high raised up exhaust port. So overall, really good head. Should make plenty of power, and uh, which I know it does. But comparing it to the other 230cc heads in the range, it's definitely the best one at four, but it's not the best at four at the uh, higher lift valve lifts. The AFR 235 really claims that as far as that goes. Matter of fact, if you look at the numbers here, the 400, the trick flow is better. The Brodix is better at other places beyond that. And then the AFR is better than that. Now, I've got one more video for the Profiler 235, but that'll be later on. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm No Superman. You guys, take care.